in any area of life, if you want to thrive, you need discipline. You just have to, as you grow up and become a mature person, you come to accept that fact. If you want to have a healthy body, you need to have the disciplines, for example, of eating nutritiously, sleeping enough, um, exercising enough, and having positive, loving relationships, right? But what about when it comes to your business? Do you realize that there are certain disciplines that if you neglect, will have your business fall apart? Or if you keep these disciplines and keep them strong and consistent, it helps your business to grow and thrive. So what are the disciplines for an authentic business? Then that's what I'm gonna share with you in this video. So the fact of a discipline is that you show up consistently no matter what. And I, I mentioned that because today I'm actually recovering from a bad cold and I might cough every now and then, but I'm still here. I'm still here because consistent content is one of those disciplines for an authentic business. And I do believe, and I've said before that if you keep the disciplines of your business going consistently, you tend to recover faster from illness. And I used to say that you tend not to get ill, but I'm getting ill obviously. So sometimes you still get ill, but with a discipline of, of business, um, you keep a positive mindset and you keep uh, a, a sense of purpose in every day. And I think that tends to, that, that tends to speed up healing. So that's, that's what I, I believe anyway. I don't know if that's scientifically proven, but I do think that positivity and purpose does tend to uh, help with physical well-being. So anyway, um, I'm here despite uh, needing to cough occasionally. So here are the seven disciplines. And these are the seven disciplines that I help my clients consistently track in their, you know, in their, in their business growth. And I'll just rattle off the seven real quick, and then I'll talk about each one specifically. Uh, first one is joyful productivity. Second one is consistent content creation. Third one is collaboration. Okay. Fourth one is paid distribution of your content. Fifth one is audience research. Sixth one is offer rhythm. And seventh one is customer feedback. So these, these are so important to me that I, I memorized them because I think, I think it's important for all of us to be building each of these disciplines bit by bit. Just like, like I said, if you want a healthy body, you need to build in the discipline of eating nutritiously, right? Sleeping enough, exercising enough, positive relationships, et cetera. So when it comes to business, <coughs> here, are the, here are the seven, excuse me. So let's start with joyful productivity which is the foundation for any thriving career, not just business, but certainly if you want a, um, a sustainable, personally sustainable and thriving business, you need to develop the, the discipline of joyful productivity. And joyful productivity is, is a wide ranging uh, set of disciplines really. Um, and I've written a book about it. I've, I've taught a course, an online course about it. So what I'm gonna say about it right now is joyful productivity includes all of your self-care practices of you know, sleeping, exercising, you know, well-being, mental, positive mental attitude, all that stuff, joyful productivity is included. Now, that's that kind of stuff, I believe that all of you are already working on, so I don't have to belabor the point. You're already working on your self-care practices, I hope, all right? But what's maybe what's more unique about joyful productivity is, is that it's really about reframing every moment of your work, all right? So, for example, I could be doing this video as a chore, I could be like, oh, I got to do my video now because if I do my video, then maybe I'll get some clients and okay. So that, that a lot of people approach creating content that way. It's a chore. It's, you just have to do it to be able to grow your audience, to be able to grow your business. It's such a means to an end type of thing, but joyful productivity, the essence of it is really to transform the means itself, to make the means or the process itself profoundly worthwhile. So when I approach this video and I say, well, not, I'm, yes, of course, it's going to help me with, you know, st staying in touch with my audience and maybe growing my business. But really, the purpose of doing this video is much higher. It's much deeper. One, one higher purpose of doing this video, of course, is the spirit of service. You know, to do this video because I care about you. 
and I want to express my care and to demonstrate my care and to exercise my love and care for my audience. And that's, that's a very important higher purpose of doing this video. Another higher purpose is to explore and express my ideas. You know, when you create content, by default, you are practicing your creativity. You can't help it, but, but exercise the muscle of creativity. And that's good for you in so many ways. And, and especially in terms of finding and ex exploring your calling, your creativity is intimately related to your life's calling. So the exercise of content is the exercise of continually deepening your calling. And so it's such a deep, deep, profound reason why we create content. So anyway, so as an example of anything you're doing, if, you know, even if I'm cleaning the toilet, right? Oh, I could just get this done. Or if I'm conscious for a moment and realize joyful productivity, even this cleaning of this toilet has a deeper purpose to it. The deeper purpose is to practice discipline, is to practice cleanliness, is to bring more love, even bringing more love to the very moment. It's possible in every single moment. So we never have to just get something done. We can always bring a little something more to the moment of love, diligence, of joy. Okay, so that's the essence of joyful productivity is to reframe the moment, okay? Um, another thing that, that I find really important for joyful productivity that I continually make my clients do is to, is to journal their celebrations and their learnings. In my group coaching program, we meet once a week and every single time we meet, I ask them to write about their celebrations and their learnings. It would take a few minutes to do that. Why is that? Because this rhythm, this rhythm, this back and forth of celebration and learning, celebration and learning every single week <coughs> helps you to maintain the right attitude about your business, right? Celebration is no matter how your business is going, even if you don't think your business is growing, even if you don't, there's always, always something to celebrate. Showing up is a celebration. Not giving up is a celebration. But of course, for most of my clients, there's always something positive in addition to that to celebrate all oh, new clients or new audience growth or, 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 or new, new discoveries about themselves or whatever maybe. But celebration is very important. And then learning is also equally important. Learning is basically, well, what are you basically, what are you learning right now in, as you grow about growing your business? As you write it down, you reinforce those new insights for you or, or the reminders of the old insights that are important for you now. But learning also is to reframe any mistakes or failures. It's so easy to get down on ourselves for, oh, this is not working well, or, oh, I tried this and it didn't work or whatever it may be. But when we reframe mistakes and, and failures as what is the beneficial lesson I can learn from this mistake or from this failure, we continually practice reframing, it changes our life. This is one of the reasons why I am able to stay positive so often is because no matter what's going on in my life, I can reframe it as, oh, the benefits. So for example, I'm going through a bad cold right now. Oh, what's the benefit? The benefit is I, I can practice discipline despite the suboptimal conditions. And the be benefit also is for me to demonstrate to my audience that no matter what, I, I'm still showing up. And yes, of course, I'm taking care of myself even more. <clears throat> I'm sleeping even more. I'm being more careful about taking supplements and all that good stuff. But still, there's always, 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 always a positive benefit to whatever you are going through. And so that's one of the, 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 the keys of celebration learning, this, this rhythm that you, we do every week. Okay. That was the first discipline. And it, it's so important that I spend extra time on it, but let me keep going here. The second, the second discipline, which I've touched on, is consistent content creation. And I've already said why it's so important, so I, I really don't mean to belabor the point, but if you are not consistently creating content, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, you, you're not building an audience, right? But more importantly, you're not, you're not getting smarter about your field. That's really the, the, the most important thing about content is if you're not consistently creating, you're not getting smarter about your field. Oh, yes, but I'm working with clients consistently. Yes. You're working with clients, but how are you reflecting on the lessons of working with your clients? Well, maybe you journal every now and then. That's fine. But to teach it in content is how you really move forward in your, in your knowledge and in your wisdom 
about your field. So if you're not consistently creating content, what the heck are you doing? You know, you've got to be doing it. It's so important. I preach this all the time and I'm saying this hopefully in a loving way. What the heck are you doing? Please get on it. Whether you're writing consistently or you're doing videos or you're doing a podcast, whatever you're doing, however you like to create content, create it because that's how you teach what you're learning in your life or in your work. Okay. So that's the second discipline. The third discipline is one that, to be honest, I have neglected for years. And I'm now coming back to it because I, I finally, I, I, I don't talk about this discipline enough, which is the discipline of collaboration. Okay, so here's the truth. In the beginning of my business, in 2009, when I started my business, nobody knew me in my industry, in the marketing or social media or business entrepreneurial industry, nobody knew who I was. So I had no network, I had no audience, I had to figure it out by myself, okay? Nobody knew who I was. I had no audience. Okay. Nobody knew me, no colleagues, no audience, no content, nothing. How did I start? I had the intuition in the beginning to immediately start with collaborations. Immediately. Not wait until I have a big audience. Wait. No, no. You immediately. Where are you right now in your business? Answer me. Where are you right now in your business? Oh, you're just starting? You have no idea what to offer? Start with collaborations. Oh, you already have an audience and you already have off, you already have products and services. Go with collaborations. Oh, you already have a giant business. You're already doing really well, six figures, seven, whatever, however you want to measure what a big business is. You know already that collaborations are gold. So whatever level you're at, and I, I, I keep saying, even if you're starting out, because people go, the, the number one objection people have about collaborations is, well, George, I don't have a product yet. Or George, I don't have a, I have a, I don't have an audience. So how do I do collaborations? I'm just asking people for favors. No, you're not. Collaborations when you're just starting out with no audience means you are collaborating with other people with no audience also to get clarity about your market position. Now I, I teach all this in my collaborations course, which I hope you'll decide to join because that's how I grew my business in the very beginning from zero. I started with collaborations right away to clarify my market positions and to even collaborate upwards a little bit with people who have an audience. I'll talk about that in the course as well. But basically, you have some kind of skill. Otherwise, you wouldn't be thinking about starting a business. You have some kind of skill that is valuable for people who already have an audience. Truly, even if your skill is not business related, it's healing or it's coaching or it's counseling, or it's some other skill, it's valuable to somebody who has an audience. It really is. And so that's how you collaborate up. Okay, so anyway, just as a quick summary of why collaboration is so important, I built my business from zero to six figures a year with collaborations as the main uh, outreach method because I didn't know how to do Facebook ads at that point. So I, I didn't know how to do, I didn't do Facebook ads. I did collaborations to grow from zero to six figures in my first two years of business. In the first year, I reached five figure monthly. That was all through collaborations. And by the second year, I was six figures in my business. And that's all through collaborations. And it wasn't, wasn't only until, so that was 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13. It was all collaborations. It wasn't until <coughs> 2014 that I started to learn Facebook ads and learn the power of that. And once I'd started doing Facebook ads, I let go of my collaborations. I kind of got lazy about it. And I only, I focus on ads and that's really how I have grown my business from 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, but now in 2019, a little bit 2018, I started collaborations again because I realized, oh my God, it's so important and it's so helpful. It's so easy to grow a business with collaborations. So anyway, that's the third th discipline. You pl please, please, no matter what stage you're at right now, no matter what stage you're at, I recommend to all of my clients, you've got to be doing at least one collaboration a month, at least. That's like the bare minimum is one collaboration a month. I am personally trying to do one collaboration a week. When I started my business and was growing in the beginning, I did two collaboration, I did two to four collaborations a month, so up to one a week. So that's what I recommend to my clients and I recommend to you as well, at least one a month, up to one a week, okay? So that's the third discipline. The fourth discipline, you hear me talk about this all the time, is paid distribution of your content. Because there is this fantasy that if I just create content 
if I create it consistently, then people will find me. No, no one's going to find you unless you do collaborations. Okay, so collaborations can be an alternative for doing paid ads. But if I, I figure if you know how to do collaborations and paid ads, you might as well do both because it'll just amplify your growth of your business so much faster than just doing one or the other. So, but paid, con paid distribution is really what I've been focused on in the last five years. And that's how a lot of you have discovered me. Uh, that's how a lot of you have started following my content on Facebook or Instagram. And um, that's how I've grown my business a lot in the past couple of years is through paid ads. And, but primarily, primarily not selling my courses through ads. I do, I do that, of course, but it's also just paying Facebook to get my, my posts and my videos out there without selling anything. It's just blessing people with content through paid ads. I did a, a video recently about how, how your content and your paid ads are your ministry. It's actually your ministry. It's actually possibly one of the best uses of your charity money. If you're going to donate to charity, why aren't you donating that money to your content distribution? Because it's probably the most effective use of your calling, of your unique strengths in the world, of your contribution in this life, right? So that's the fourth discipline is paid distribution of, of your content, but also, of course, of your offerings. The fifth discipline, which I also talk about sometimes, is audience research. And I also make my clients do this. Audience research includes looking at the people who are liking your social media posts, okay? The people who like your Facebook posts, for example, or your YouTube, uh, who comment on your YouTube uh, uh, videos. Look at their profiles. YouTube is a little harder because people don't fill out their profiles on YouTube. This is why I'm such a big fan of Facebook ads because with Facebook, when someone likes your post, you can go and look at their profile. You can go and look at the, the uh, sometimes people have hidden their posts so that only their friends see it. You can't see it, but at least you can go to go to their Facebook profile, hover over more, click on likes, and you can see what pages they've liked. So you can get a sense of what interest this person has. This is all public stuff. This is all public. Even if you're not their friend, you can still see their likes, to see their interest, to see if you're building the right audience, you see. And you can also tell a lot sometimes by people's photos that they're public and their cover image and all that stuff. But look at their likes, because I'll tell you a lot about their interests and their values. So audience research includes looking at people's social media, your, your engagers, the, your, your fans, social media profiles, but it also very importantly includes doing fan interviews, having one-on-one -on -one conversations with your, with your fans about primarily what they're buying and what's working about what they're buying related to what you, what the kind of stuff you offer and what is not working about what they've bought. So what didn't they like about it? Because this gives you all this data about essentially what your audience is buying is your market. Think about this. The money they are, your, your audience, right? The money they are spending is literally your market because your offers, your product and services are basically going to take channel some of their spending towards your, your, your product services. So you got to understand what they're spending money on and what's working well for them there, what's not working, what they don't they like about the product services they're buying. You get to fill those gaps, you see. So uh, I've, I, I want to make an invitation. If you have already bought one of my courses, if you've bought at least one of my courses and you've never done a fan interview with me personally, I invite you to do a fan interview with me. Again, if you've bought one of my courses and you haven't yet done a fan interview, I would love to do a fan interview with you because I have a discipline myself of doing it. I do one fan interview per week. So I have four slots a month and the fan interview is basically half an hour half an hour with me, 15 minutes, I'm asking you questions about what you bought related to my, my areas. And then 15 minutes, you get to ask me anything you want. I can help you with anything. So that's how the fan interview works. So anyway, if you're interested, comment below and I'll, I'll, I'll send you a link for, for scheduling that with me. So that's the uh, fifth discipline is audience research. Very important, helps you to understand your market so you can, you can create offerings that are actually so well-placed that you can just whisper your offerings and people will buy because you've understood your audience now, okay? You can't just understand your audience just by creating content and by looking at comments. You have to have a conversation with them about what they're buying, okay? So the sixth discipline is an offer rhythm. This is something a lot of you are missing, okay? You, you're creating content, maybe you're buying ads, maybe you're even doing collaborations, but you're not making offers enough to your audience. You're not selling enough. You're not, you're not reminding them about what you, sell. 
And if you don't remind them enough about what you sell, they don't remember. They think you're just writing posts and making videos for fun. Yes. So you have got to have a rhythm of making offerings to your market, meaning selling or, or announcing or inviting people to your products and services. And you know that I have a rhythm. You know this because if you follow my content, you know that basically once a month, I sell, so I sell a course, right? Once a month, I sell a course. And if you look at my Facebook page, my rhythm of offers is basically for every, once a week on Wednesday, I, I do some kind of call to action. Hey, buy this, or hey, let me know what you think about the upcoming thing I'm gonna sell to you. What, you know, what do you think about the title of the upcoming course? What do you think I should cover? All that stuff. So on Wednesdays is, is when I sell something to you. I, I do a call to action. You'll notice on my Facebook business page, that's what I do. Uh, so you could see exactly what my rhythm is, my content slash offer rhythm on my Facebook business page. And my, my suggestion is one offer or call to action out of every five to 10 content posts. I think that's a good rhythm. You can bend that number a little bit, especially during launches. Like for example, this Sunday, I'm going to do another offer uh, to remind people about my upcoming course. So that's going to be two, two calls to action for seven posts. So I'm bending the number a little bit during a launch, but regularly it's one one thing you're asking your audience to do out of every five to 10, blessing them with content, okay? So that's the sixth uh, discipline is offer rhythm. And the seventh discipline, last but certainly not least, is your discipline of getting customer feedback on a regular basis. And this is what I do very, very uh, consistently. Every single time I, I, I sell a course and I teach it, you all know if you've bought my courses, you know I do this religiously. I keep asking for feedback. I say, please give me your feedback. How did the session go so that I can keep improving on it? Okay. Same thing when I, when I meet with one-on-one -on -one clients. When I meet with clients, they, they schedule with me through Acuity Scheduling, which is the software I use for scheduling appointments, acuityscheduling.com. And Acuity Scheduling is nice because I can set an automated follow-up email for every appointment that I have. And that's exactly what I have. When I meet with clients one-on-one, -on -one, after I meet with them, they get an automatic um, email from me. That's, I don't even have to think about it. It's already programmed through Acuity. Every single appointment, get a follow-up email, and I can customize the follow-up emails for different types of appointments. But for my one-on-one -on -one clients, they meet with me afterwards. They get an email saying, hey, how did the session go? What's your biggest takeaway, and what can I improve? So I get feedback all the time about how I can keep becoming a better coach or a better teacher. So customer feedback is incredibly important because that's how you really – make your services and products more and more excellent so that you get more and more word of mouth and that you really fulfill the mission of your business. So I hope this is helpful. Um, I'll just run through the seven disciplines again. One is joyful productivity. Okay, that's the foundation of, of your sustainable business. Second one is con consistent content creation. Third one is collaboration. Fourth one is paid distribution. Otherwise, how will people find your content? Five is audience research. Otherwise, how do you know what, what products and services to sell that will actually sell rather than you sell something and then nobody buys, right? Audience research is very important. The sixth one is an offer rhythm, a rhythm of making offers, not selling too much, but not selling too rarely, because what, which is what a lot of you do. And the seventh is customer feedback. Otherwise, how will you keep improving? So these seven disciplines, when, when put together, makes it an incredible, growing, thriving, sustainable business, an authentic business. So last, <coughs> last thing I want to say is that um, if you, I hope you will take these seven disciplines, think about them carefully, journal about them, and then work with your coach, what, whoever you have as a coach, business coach, life coach, work with your coach on these seven disciplines for your business and it will, it will uh, really grow. Um, if you want my support personally, uh, I will soon be opening my group coaching program for the year. I open this once a year. And in my group coaching program, we have a tracking. I, I have a tracking spreadsheet with everybody who wants to, to track with me. Um, their seven disciplines. And it really helps people to kind of like remind themselves, keep coming back to these things. And so if you want my help personally with that, join my group coaching program. You can inquire with me about it so you can get on the early bird kind of announcement list. And um, anyway, whether you work with me or work with your own coach on these seven disciplines, please, please work on this because this is how you really build a successful, 
authentic business. All right, I hope this helps. And now I'm gonna go and take a look at uh, what comments are coming through from uh, those who are joining me for this live video on Facebook. And um, oh, I, I do just see one comment thus far and that's from Captain. And thank you so much, Captain, for your, for your uh, supportive comment there. Thanks to those who are joining me for this also, Shweta and Linda and Bian Spa. Uh, and uh, someone's name is in Hebrew and I don't read Hebrew, unfortunately, so I can't read your name there, but thank you for joining me. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, go ahead and comment below. I look forward to your, um, any discussion about these seven disciplines. All right, I hope this helps and I will see you in the next video. Be well.